Pop. Hi, I'm Jeff. This is Pop, and you're here. Before we get started, Black Lives do have and will always matter, even if I'm not here to remind you, okay? Run it back. Black Lives do have and will always matter. There'll be links in the description for you to check out, and just remember, it is our responsibility to protect black women when? Every single day. Okay. We're just gonna hop into this TBR like I wasn't gone for like six months. Let's go. Rambuka jeans from Diesel, I'll never need you. This is a sequel. I'm Max Keeble, I'm representing for the black people. <clears throat> First of all, it's giving little bill. So let me just take my hair out. Okay, fresh retwist. Got me looking crazy. Okay, 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 okay. That's that's getting better. That's getting better. Okay. All right. So, yo, okay. I'm not even going to give y'all too much of, I'll give y'all a rundown of where I've been in a vlog. So, just know that I'm back and I just, reading slump, we don't know her. She no longer exists. She has been evicted. We gave her her 30 day notice and she is gone. And now that she's gone, that means I can make my side piece my main piece again. And that's y'all. So. There's no way you're that itchy. All right. Okay. But since it is spooky season, the books are all spooky themed. Not spooky theme, thriller. Yeah, all of them are thrillers except for one. I'm just so nervous doing this. I feel like I haven't done it in so long. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But anyway, all of them are thrillers except for one. And I think I'm done rambling. So let's just start with the first one. The Lies I Tell by Julie Clark. It's a book of the month book. I got it last month. I believe and child I'm gonna do a wine and wings on this it's giving very much girl let me talk to you about this book over dinner time like that's very much what it's giving so so this book is about Meg and Kat Meg is a con artist and she basically just goes around town well, around the country stealing people's identities not even but like making her own identity and basically just like making a name for herself and bringing down people in the process that's Meg now Kat is a reporter well was a reporter an investigative journalist or whatever um who doesn't know Meg but due to an unfortunate circumstance she becomes connected with me so basically ugh, child let me just put away all this political jargon and let's get into the meat of it okay so basically child um cat was investigating meg's schemes okay meg comes back to town to to, to wherever they're from in california meg comes back to town and cat was waiting for Meg to come back all this time because Kat blames Meg for something tragic that happened in her life that I'm not going to get into because this is not a uh, wine and wings, okay? So, Kat basically befriends Meg and tries to get back at Meg for what happened to her. In the meantime, Kat has this gambler um, addict boyfriend or fiance, child... This book is a wrap. I've annotated. This book is literally a wrap. I have 40 45 pages left. So, I'm going to finish this book today. It's a wrap for all the girlies, okay? Period. It's giving very much City Girls Up by 10,000. It's giving very much 
All these niggas wanna fuck JT. They do. Hellcat, this a SRT. Pull up G Wax, he's three. Next, we have Falling Fortune by Chloe Gall. This is a new release. Um, I think all the girlies have been talking about it. It looks beautiful. I got this from Book of the Month for this month. And we're just going to read this all together because um, I read it and then I just reread it. Let's just get into it. Child, my forehead is shiny. Okay, moving on. The year is 1931 in Shanghai. And there's a new decade of intrigue, okay? I don't read too many books set in this time period, so we are, or with the setting, so we're just gonna have to see. I'm very excited, okay? So four years ago, Rosalind Lang was brought back from the brink of death, but the strange experiment stopped her from sleeping and aging, and it, and it allows her to heal from any wound. So basically, she can't die. Now she's desperate for redemption from her treacherous past. She uses her abilities as an assassin for her country. Her codename is Fortune. But when the Jap Japanese girl, you know how to read, come on. But when the Japanese Imperial Army begins its invasion march, Rosalind's mission pivots. <laughs> There's a series of murders that are causing unrest in Shanghai, and the Japanese are under suspicion. Rosalind's new orders are to infiltrate fo foreign society and identify the culprits behind the terror plot before more of her people are killed. To reduce suspicion, however, she must pose as the wife of another nationalist spy, Orion Hall. And though Rosalind finds Orion's calavere attitude and playboy demeanor infuriating, girl, I'm getting excited. She's willing to work with him for the greater good. But Orion, Orion, I've been calling him Orion, girl, Orion, girls, Orion like the belt child, like Omarion's brother child. Orion has an agenda of his agenda. Oh, child, Mr. Krabs, go away. But Rosalind, I mean, Orion has an agenda of his own, and Rosalind has secrets that she wants to keep burned. This is a heavy book. My arm hurts. As they both attempt to unravel the conspiracy, the two spies soon find that there are deeper and more horrifying layers to this mystery than they ever imagined. Okay, my arm. Child, I don't know if I ever read that when I picked it, because... Honestly, after I got it in the mail, I was like, I don't remember picking this one, but I guess I did, and I guess it captivated me, and I, it's like I read that blur for the first time, and it's captivated me again, so we're going to have to see. Moving on. Ugh. Next, we're going to read The Push. This is a book by Ashley Aldrin. This is another book of the month book. I got this in... I got this months ago. Yeah, got this book in January. This is my birthday month book. But okay, so this is book is called The Push. Look, the starter kit. Bang is a nail. Still, this is about Blythe Connor, and she I guess has a baby, and she's determined that she will be the warm company mother to her baby that she never had. But the baby, the baby's name is Violet. And Blythe is convinced that something is wrong with the baby. Like, why is she so weird? Why you act like that? You know what I mean? Or is it all in Blythe's head? Her husband, Fox. Oh, child, these are names. It's giving Lifetime Movie Network, child. Fox says that she's imagining things. Oh, Lord. The more he dismisses her fears, the more Blythe begins to question her own sanity. And the more we begin to question what Blythe is telling us about her life as well. Okay? Then her son Sam is born, and with him, Blythe has the blissful connection she's always imagined with her child. Now, even Violet seems to love her little brother, but when life as they know it is changed in an instant, the devastating fall out forces, fall out forces Blythe to face the truth. It says this is an immersive novel that will an immersive novel that will challenge everything you think you know about motherhood, about what we owe our children, and what it feels like when women are not believed. You know. This gives me, first of all, I feel like my hands are ashy. Do they look ashy? I don't think they are. They just feel it. Please hold. I'm not about to taint my return with ashy hands. Like, what? Okay, it's the lighting because my hands look the same. Okay, boom. You know what? This book is giving me very much Colleen Hoover's Verity. Because now, if you've read Colleen Hoover's Verity, 
You know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so that goes to say I have high expectations for this book, Ashley Audrain. And if this does not like, give me more twist than an African hair braiding shop, the girls and I will not be pleased. My interim book will be an interim to the rest of these books as well. Is Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry by Hoya Gothney. It says Joya, but I don't know if it's a J or an H. I don't know. Okay, now this is about Quinn who keeps lists of everything. From the day she's ugly cried to things I would never meet. Mm, mm, what? From the day she's ugly cried to things I would never admit out loud and all the boys she liked to kiss. Her least. <sighs> her list keeps her sane. <laughs> By writing her fears on paper, she never has to face them in real life until her journal goes missing. An anonymous account posts one of her lists on Instagram for the whole school to see and blackmails her into facing seven of her greatest fears or else her entire journal will go public. That's messy. Quinn doesn't know who to trust. That's where she teams up with Carter Bennett, the last known person to have her journal, in a race against time to track down the blackmailer. Track down the blackmailer. Together, they journey through everything Quinn's been too afraid to face, and along the way, Quinn finds the courage to be honest, to live in the moment, and to fall in love. This is gonna be, this is like, just like a cute, fun read to like, break the ice for all the psychological uh, trauma I'm about to put myself through. Like, I'm just so excited, okay? And it's cute, it's, I'm assuming this is high school, so definitely YA, we love a YA, we love a YA read, like, it's just so cute. It's black people. It's love. It's black love. It's overcoming fears. It's growth. Like, it's just... Next is The House Across the Lake. I'll put a picture of it right here. By Riley Sager. I haven't ordered this yet, which is really surprising for me, but I just have not been in the loop, you guys, okay? So, I don't know anything about it or like, you could put his name on a phone book I'll buy it so whatever we're gonna read this together okay let's go Casey Fletcher a recently widowed actress trying to es escape a streak of bad press has retreated to the peace and quiet of her family's lake house in Vermont armed with a pair of binoculars and several bottles of bourbon she passes the time watching Tom and Catherine Royce the glamorous couple living in the house across the lakes one day on the lake Catherine nope Casey yeah Casey saves Catherine from drowning and the two strike up a budding friendship but the more they get to know each other, and the longer Casey watches, I said Cassie first, Casey, child, it becomes clear that Catherine and Tom's marriage isn't as perfect as it appears. When Catherine suddenly vanishes, Casey immediately suspects Tom of foul play. What she doesn't realize is that there's more than, than there's more to the story than meets the eye, and that shocking secrets can lurk beneath the most placid of surfaces. Okay, first of all, it's Riley Saker and it's it has a house on the cover and it says house in the name I don't have much more to say about it we're gonna see what it gives together okay that's just what we're gonna do and then lastly is an audiobook lastly we have The Jigsaw Man by Nadine Matheson Child's a serial killer book okay so there's a serial killer and a copycat they're locked in a violent game of cat and mouse can D.I. Angelica Hanley stop them before it's too late? On the day she returns to active duty with the Serial Crimes Unit, dun -dun. Detective Inspector Angelica Hanley is called to a crime scene. Dismembered body parts from two victims have been found by the river. Oh, wow. The modus operandi, if I could have just said M.O., bears a striking resemblance to Peter Olivier, the notorious jigsaw killer who has spent the past two years behind bars. Behind bars, girl, one bar, come on. What, when he learns that someone is co-opting his grisly signature, oh, his writing, the arrangement of victims' limbs in puzzle piece shape it, shape is, shapes <laughs> the reading. He decides to take matters into his own hands. As the body count rises, D.I. Angelica Henley is faced with an unspeakable new threat. Can she apprehend the copycat killer before Olivier finds a way <coughs> to get to him first? Okay bars or will she herself become the next victim and there's a second one the binding room which i don't know maybe we'll see if we'll add that to the list as well child but anyway 
I'm back. Don't mind the hair flips, child. Um, yeah, at this point I'm rambling. What do I say at the end? Oh yeah. That's all I have for you today. Alright y'all, that's all I have for you for today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I have to go because I have more books to read. But as always, I will see you, see me, in the next one. Bye!